This is part 12 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to make an ASP.NET Core application serve static files such as HTML, images, CSS, and JavaScript files. By default, an ASP.NET Core application will not be able to serve static files. To be able to serve static files, our application should meet two requirements. First, all the static files must be present in this www root folder. This folder is called content root folder and it must be directly inside the root project folder. In our case, the root project folder is employee management and our web root folder www root is directly within that project root folder. And all the static files that you want to be able to serve from this ASP.NET Core application should be within this www root folder. At the moment, I have this banner image. So let's copy this and paste it within our www root folder. To be able to access this image from the browser, we first specify the name of the server. In our case, we are running the application on our local machine. So localhost colon a port number. This port number may be slightly different on your machine. And then a forward slash and the name of the image. In our case, the name of the image is banner.jpg. Notice we don't see the image and we still see the response that is produced by the middleware that we have registered using this run method. Now this is because at the moment as it stands right now the request processing pipeline that we have for our application does not have the capability to serve static files. To be able to serve static files we have to register another piece of middleware and that is use static files middleware. Before we add that middleware to our application's request processing pipeline. Let's clean this a bit. We don't need these two app.use middleware. So let's get rid of them. And we also don't need this logging statements right here. And all we want the application to do is print this message, hello world. And we also does not need the logger that we have injected. Remember two requirements to be able to serve static files. First, all our static files must be present in this web root folder, www root. And the second requirement is to add use static files middleware to our application's request processing pipeline. Notice we still see hello world, the response that is produced by the middleware that we have registered using run method. But when we navigate to forward slash banner.jpg, we see the image as expected. Instead of having all static files like images, CSS and JavaScript files flat in this www root folder, it's common to have folders for these different file types. For example, all CSS files go in a folder with the name CSS. Similarly, all images will be in images folder. And then all JavaScript files will be in JS folder. Now let's copy this image1.jpg to the images folder. To be able to access this image1.jpg from the browser, we have to specify the correct path in the address bar here. We know all our images are in the images folder. So we have to specify the folder path and then the name of the image, which is image1.jpg. There we go. By default, this use static files middleware will only serve static files that are present in this www root folder. It's also possible to serve static files that are outside of this web root folder if you want to. We'll discuss how to do this in our upcoming videos. Most web applications also have a default document and it is that default document that is displayed when we navigate to the root URL of our application. For example, when we navigate to localhost colon 15410 without any other URL segments, we want to serve the default document. But at the moment, we see the response produced by the middleware that is registered using run method. First, let's add a default page for our application. By default, the name of the default page for our application should be one of the following default.htm, default.html, 
index.htm or index.html. Let's add a page with the name default.html. And then within the body, let's include an h1 element that displays hello from default.html. Notice, even after adding the default document, when we navigate to the root URL, we still see hello world message and not our default document. That's because to be able to serve the default document, we should add another piece of middleware to our application's request processing pipeline and that is use default files. Notice, even now, when we navigate to the root URL, we still do not see our default document. This is because the order in which these two pieces of middleware are registered is very important. Use default files must be registered before use static files middleware. Let's change the order and see if it works as expected. There we go. We now see the default document. The reason it didn't work before is because this use default files doesn't actually serve the default file. It only changes the request path to point to the default document. In our case, to point to default.html, which will then be served by this next piece of middleware, which is static files middleware, like any other document. If we have the order reverse, then the default files middleware will change the request path, but we do not have static files middleware next in the pipeline to be able to serve that default file. And that's the reason we were not able to see this default document. Notice the browser address bar still reflects the root URL that we have requested and not the rewritten URL. Now, what if we do not want this default.html to be our default document? Instead, we want foo.html or more commonly, we may have home.html which we want to be our default document. To achieve that, we have to customize the behavior of this use default files middleware. Notice from the IntelliSense, we can see we've got two more overloads of this method. I'm going to use this overloaded version which takes default files options object as a parameter. So first, let's create an instance of that class. And the first thing that we are going to do here is clear the default default file names by calling the clear method on default file names property. And then we want to add foo.html as our default file name. For that, we use the add method. And then specify the name of our default document, which is foo.html. Finally, let's pass this default files options object to use default files middleware. With all these changes, let's run our project. There we go. Foo.html is the default document for our application right now. There is another piece of middleware called use file server middleware. This use file server middleware combines the functionality of use default files, use static files, and use directory browser middlewares. As the name implies, directory browser middleware enables directory browsing and allows the end user to see the list of files and folders in a specified directory. Now we can replace these two middlewares with use file server middleware. So let's do that. Notice we are back to using default.html as the default document. But even with file server, we want to use this foo.html as our default document. For that, we need to customize use file server middleware. And for that, we can use an overloaded version where we can pass file server options object as the parameter. So instead of creating default files options object, we create file server options object and specify foo.html as our default document and pass that object as a parameter to this middleware. So let's create file server options object. And on the file server options object, we have 
default file options property and that has got default file names. And then let's pass file server options object to use file server middleware. With all these changes, let's run our project one more time. Notice we still see the response from default.html and not from foo.html. This might be because the browser may have cached the response. To fix it, reload the browser by clicking this button right here or using the keyboard shortcut Control R. Notice now we see the response from foo.html. Now, the important point to keep in mind is the pattern that we use to add and customize these middleware components. In most cases, we add middleware components to our application's request processing pipeline using extension method names that start with the word use. For example, use developer exception page, use file server, use static files, use default files. And to customize these middleware components, we use the respective options objects. To customize developer exception page middleware, we use this object, developer exception page options. Notice the name is the same as that of the middleware, except that we have this options word appended. Similarly, to customize file server middleware, we use file server options object. Similarly, to customize default files middleware, we use default files options object. Now, let's quickly recap the important points that we have discussed so far in this video. By default, an ASP.NET Core application will not serve static files. The default directory for static files is www root. To serve static files, use static files middleware. To serve a default file, use default files middleware and the following are the default file names by default. But you can change the default file by customizing the behavior of use default files middleware. Use default files must be registered before use static files middleware. Use file server middleware combines the functionality of use static files, use default files and use directory browser middleware. That's it in this video. Thank you for watching.